In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new HTML5 semantic elements. So the word semantics comes from ancient Greek, referring to a study of meaning. So when we say semantic elements, we simply mean elements with meaning, i.e. from the element's name, we have a rough idea on what the element should actually contain. So let's start out by taking a look at the nav element, denoted by the opening and closing nav tags. Now the nav element should contain the main navigational content of a web page, such as links to help the user navigate their way around the website. Now we also have a header element, and the header element should contain introductory text regarding the web page, or introductory content I should say. We also have a footer element, denoted by the opening and closing footer tags. Inside the footer element, we should put some content such as links to other related documents and copyright information. Copyright information could be regarding the author of the website. Related document links and copyright information. Let's clear that up. Now we also have a section element denoted by the opening and closing section tags. The section element is defined as being a thematic grouping of content. And we should identify what that content is with some form of heading. I'm just going to put HTML and then we could have a paragraph of text under that heading saying HTML is a great language to learn. And there's some form of section. It has a theme. And the theme is HTML, and we've identified that with our level 3 heading. And we also have an article element. I'm just going to put it down here. Now, the article element is defined by the opening and closing article tags. Now, the article element is defined as representing a self-contained composition in a document. So an example of this would be using the article element as some form of forum post. So let's take a look at this. We could have our header element. Inside our header we could have a level 3 heading. This is a forum post. And under there we could have a paragraph element saying by Ashley then under there we could have our content. This is a very, very short forum post. Then under there we could also have our footer element saying written by Ashley. Right, so there's some kind of article representing a forum post. It's important to note that the header and footer elements inside the article are in a different kind of context. So our header at the top of our document and the footer at the bottom of the document, they're headers and footers for the web page as a whole. But in the context of having a header and footer inside an article, the header inside the article should contain introductory content regarding that article and that footer should contain footer type content regarding that article. So they're basically the two different contexts that we can have some of these elements in. Now that we've had a quick look at some of the new HTML5 semantic elements, let's take a look at where you can actually learn more about these semantic elements. You can find this at dev.w3.org forward slash HTML5 forward slash spec. And here we can see the specification for HTML5. So I recommend having a read through this, although it may be quite a large document, it'll give you some really solid understandings of some of the different elements and concepts of HTML.